You know what's going to be incredible? Hmm. Tasting coffee after putting like a cough drop in my mouth. Are you being sarcastic? No, it's going to, I think it's going to be horrible. I think yeah, gonna, that's, yeah. yeah. That's it's worse gonna, than probably brushing your teeth and then drinking orange juice. I bet it's pretty similar. To me, I was picturing like what a duck no, would taste in an orange juice is probably spill. worse. What'd you say? Nothing. A duck in an oil spill? Yeah, I feel that, that's like the taste I was getting. Like gassy oil? Petrol. Like petrol? Petrol. Petrol. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Hi, Connor. Are you ready to MAP? I'm ready to pee. Ignorance is bliss. I'm living in a world of my own, and it's awesome. Oh, I thought I was responsible for 9-11 when I was five. Where were you? In Pennsylvania. Touch grass, might I suggest. We're just going to dive right in today. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. We're we happy. need like a better transition know, from there. I know. I, never, I go, here we are. I'm, I completely agree with you. Hey guys, welcome back. So we should have a slogan after that. And goes like, "Well, we could do the whoa, 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 yeah, 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 yeah." And that signifies that we're starting. Well, I think we should have like a welcome back to Brooke and Connor make a podcast where we. It's too late. Where we dot the t's and cross it's our eyes. Too I's. late. You can't. What episode are we on? Seventy. Sixty-five. It's, no, because seventy sixty-nine was last week. Yeah. It's too late. No, it's improve. never too late to it's teach. It's always too late to improve. Do you That's think, what I do. Do you think Bobby, the oldest dog in the world with a boner, would approve of that? You can totally teach a dog new tricks. Um, you can't teach this dog new tricks. Hey. I think I have learned everything that I'm gonna learn. No, not in yeah. my book. Not in my not in my watch. Do you see me picking up a new language? No. Yeah. But that's a weird example. I could see you Do you see me starting to play guitar? No. Right. I, I think see. I've mastered all the skills that I'm going to have. No. I mean, you started knitting this year. No, I knew how to knit in, in uh, when I was like eight. I could see you getting into like fishing. Mm. I know it seems crazy, but. Yeah. I don't think so. Because it bothers me when the hook goes in the fish's mouth. Right. If there's a magnetic way that I could fish via magnet, that would be fine. There is. There's got to a- be a better way. Well, what is it? <laughs> well, it's a toy. It's for uh, kids. It's oh, for, it's I love that toy. Yeah, when you put fun. them in the kiddie pool. Yeah, yeah. We should get that. We I should, should for the see pod. us spending hours going fishing. I know. In that for the pod. I also loved that one where uh, it's called something. It's got the elephant's trunk and it's it, the elephant. Hungry, hungry hippo. Nope. The elephant had so many bu- butterflies in his trunk for some reason, and he go, he spouts them out like this, and you have to catch him with a net. What a brilliant oh, game yeah. for kids. That is good. Did you guys see that? Yeah, never had that one. Ella fun. Speaking of kids games, this is fun. Hungry Hungry Hippo. Incredible. Yeah. I would love to play that with friends. That one, that that's a game of luck. I don't agree at all. It's a game of speed. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't go any faster than... You, you'd be surprised. No, but also if, if, if the balls are not in your court, then you're not eating them. The balls will be in your court depending... It's not even about who's going the fastest per se. It's about whose rhythm... Right. Is enticing the balls to your core. So it is a game of skill after all. It is a game of skill. Wow. Who would have thought Hungry Hungry Hippo? Yeah. And you know what other game is really good that I actually like you could totally play on your own as an adult? That car one where it's like you get a card and it tells you how to arrange the cars on your board. And then your job is to figure out how to get all the cars off of the board without crashing into each other. Mm -mm. You know it. Nope. Can someone look up? Colorful car game, you would know it. No, I don't think. No I one. I wouldn't. That's is, not even ringing any bells for me. Which do you is guys fine. know what I'm talking about? I'm not explaining it well I've at all. I've seen it as like a mobile game, but yeah, you have to like unblock. Y- the yes, but it's mall. like the no, no, but it's the board game of that. It's not even a board game. It's like it's it's on a not necessarily a board, but more of like a gra a, a portable graph that. Oh, yeah. See, I've never seen this. Really? No. Oh, that's fun. You just have to figure out how to get all of the cars off of that. Traffic jam. Traffic jam. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Nah, pass. Oh. I don't need any any skill games. 
Um, I get. I almost want to snap my phone over you my don't leg. Like puzzles. I want to almost snap up my phone over my leg when we play Wordle. So I don't think that. Traf- but you love it deep down. I think. I don't think the traffic jam is the thing for me. Do you not like puzzles? No. God no. Really? Hell no. I remember doing a puzzle with you. Or was it someone else? No, I, there was a puzzle there, but I was in. I was. I was committed for one day, and then when I came back the next day, I was like, "Was it? Why is this still here?" Oh. You worked on it for several days. I feel like you were really fixated on it, though. If I my th- memory serves me. Yeah, I blacked out that time period of my life. Mm. I mean, I was playing a puzzle. How was your weekend? Connor, I did nothing. You, nothing. You couldn't have done nothing. I did nothing. You want to lie? Maybe you lie about something you I did? I can't even like think of something to lie about. Okay. Okay, I went great. to Pazu though. That's good. That's good. Which, if you guys don't know, is the best sushi in the entire world. It's Sugarfish's sister restaurant, and Sugarfish is also the best sushi. But Kazu is just hand rolls, and the rice is so warm, and the fish is so cold, and the seaweed is so crunchy. It's like the most insane sensory experience, and it tastes good. Do you have anything to add? No, that's pretty much. That's pretty much it. It is really good. It's so good. That's like a fish. Oof. I tried. Never mind. I'm not going to tell that story. Just tell it. A week ago, I went out for Mother's Day and we got, we had a couple drinks and then we went and got sushi. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this looks suspect. And it was. Like, if you're mm-hmm. ever saying to yourself, that fish doesn't look like it's going to sit right, it's not going to. Right. So also don't eat it and then just lay horizontal for eight hours. Are you the kind of person that like when you taste something and you're like, oh, this isn't good. Like this is going to give me food poisoning. You'll keep going to kind of see like maybe like just kind of testing further or you'll stop right away. No, I weigh my options. Like if I'm in an airport and I'm going to get on a long flight and I had already purchased something and I'm getting on my flight, I'm not throwing that away. Mm -hmm. I'm eating it. Mm -hmm. When I went to jail and they gave me my food and I was so hungry, I was like, this is sick in the head. But after all, I am in jail. So it's kind of reframing it like, what other options do I have? Mm -hmm. In this scenario, I do need to eat this jail food Mm -hmm. because I don't know when I'm leaving. (laughs) So (laughs) at this difficult time, I'm going to eat this bologna. Right. For me, it's like I will do that even if I'm at like a restaurant that's not a jail and I can freely order something else. I'll take like at least 10 bites to confirm that I think it's going to give me food poisoning. Every time I've been like, this is going to give me food poisoning, it gives me food poisoning. Every, without fail. I think that I have chronic food poisoning. Like, I think I just wake up every day with food poisoning. Like, I think my baseline is everyone else's food poisoning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well... I have nothing I can say to yeah. about that because this is not never been. A, we've never claimed to be a health and wellness podcast. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's we, there's always something. That's why we're sponsored by Zocdoc because we're always booking appointments. What questions do you have for me about my appendicitis? Here's the thing about your appendicitis. We have to stop saying what kind of questions you have for me. Oh, I because that's giving me appendicitis. Okay, I can't because it's like it's not just like a bit. It's like more so compulsion at this point. You can give me three. Can you give me three uh, times to say it? Yeah. Counting that one or starting yeah, fresh know, now? Starting fresh. Okay. Three. Okay. Starting I have now. not said it yet. I used to get three what ifs when I was a kid. I could ask my parents three what if, like what if, like a plane flies into our house, what if, and I got three of those. And then after the third, they would be completely silent in response to any of my what ifs. Okay. Uh, we can't do that because this is a podcast. So uh, on your you third just ha- I guess you just ignore it. Okay. Or I'll Venmo you five bucks. That's good too. Per, per, what, per what questions. Yeah, what questions. Okay, uh, what are you wondering about my current appendicitis? <laughs> um, is it her? What do you mean? You I'll, tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Because we have had several friends no, that have had No, this is the most sure I've been that this is, this is more than just a, your garden variety stomach ache. Because it's not even in my stomach. But your appendix, it, appendix, it, your appendix, what is it? Appendix. appendix. It's a, it's in the bottom right of your abdomen. I know. Yeah. Basically, yesterday, last night, I like got this cramp, 
And then I was like, oh, that's weird. I've never had that specific feeling before. And it did not go away, but it migrated like to my butt. And now I just have like a stomach ache in my butt. And I, and it's so persistent and I don't know what it could be. And I don't want to go to urgent care because I don't want to be like, my butt hurts as an, as a 26 year old girl. Well, the good news is. I'm going to go and complaining about my butt. Well, one thing, HIPAA, so patient, patient dogs are confidentiality. So you'll just have to never see one person ever again. Right. Which is fine. Um, second thing is your appendix isn't located in but, your butt. No, but it, it's like very much like butt, lower abdomen, lower back abdomen combo. Maybe you slipped a disc. There's no discs where I'm experiencing discomfort. Well, I don't know why I'm diagnosing you. Sorry for your... Sorry for the situation. Uh -huh. And Google says in rare cases, an appendix can cause this it, feeling in your butt. Well, Google is... Or anal cancer. Hey. Okay, role play. Do you want to know what I did this weekend? Role play. I'm going to urgent care. You're the, you're my, okay. you're, do, you're the doctor. All right. I'm myself. Okay. You start. Because you have okay. just walked into okay. the room that I'm in. All right. <laughs> By the Bro. way, when the doctor knocks, I don't ever say anything. Do you? I go, come in. I don't. I don't say anything. They'll come in. No, they. they if you say don't come I'll in, I'll say don't come in if they shouldn't come in. But I, if they, if I'm ready, I they, don't say anything. They do always knock. Yeah, of course. And I'm sitting there on the paper, like, hello, come on in. There is nothing worse than climbing up onto that for me as for somebody you. whose legs can't reach a thing. Climbing up onto that, ripping the paper as I go. <laughs> completely then the paper f completely falls off of the chair when i'm trying to situate myself man it sucks for me because i'm i'm like and i sit there with my legs dangling what i don't know when they're gonna come in what are all, what's in all these cabinets what, what's over <laughs> yeah. i'm like going through yeah. all their stuff yeah where that's why i'm glad they knock because i gotta go yeah i was just over on that's on over here on my phone before you came in i'm sure they have cameras in there no i think that would be illegal i broke you, people change oh yeah Anyways, okay. let's go. I already got back in my seat, so I can't knock on the door again. Knock, knock, knock. Brooke? Hi. Hi. Oh. Oh, my God. Are you Lady Efron? <laughs> no. Oh. That's my sister. Okay. I was going to say, I love your podcast. Mm. But... Yes, um, that is my sister's. So I'll tell her. I'll tell her. So, so what do you? Uh, what, what, what? Oh, what's uh, bringing you in today? So, basically, what had happened was I was experiencing some cramping in my lower abdomen. Right. And it's since migrated to kind of like an extreme discomfort in my butt. Okay. Okay, just looking at you, I can tell you have anal contusions. <laughs> just, I can see it in your eyes. Right. Um, what we're going to need you to do here, I don't, I don't want to continue talking because well, <laughs> I would have to look it into your into your body, do you think through that, your butt. Oh my God, I'm, then I can't go if they're going to do that. Well, then I guess. I think they'll probably give me a, actually, you know what I was doing last night because I've been watching so many doctor shows, I gave myself an exam to see if my abdomen was distended. Even though I don't know what a non-distended abdomen feels like or what the Did you take means. any medicine for it? I took gas X and that didn't work because it's not a gas pain because I've been farting. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Good catch. Good catch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, guys. We want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. ZocDoc. When someone's just exceptionally good at what they do, it could be a waiter, a chef, or a doctor, you know you're in good hands. It's like seeing a waiter balance five trays of sizzling fajitas on one arm. That's uh... You're confident in them. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and at ease. On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away on the ZocDoc app. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed take your insurance, are available when you need them, <laughs> treat almost every condition under the sun, including coughs. I've been slowly checking off things on my things I need, mm -hmm. things I need to see a doctor for. It's, it's actually, what did I call it? Things I, 
reasons I think I'm gonna die. Right. And ZocDoc has helped me with, well, specifically this thing in my mouth. ZocDoc helped me a lot with. Good. Because I didn't know who to go to. <laughs> like, so ZocDoc was able what to. What was it? Um, TBD, because I haven't had my appointment yet. Okay, but you've made it via ZocDoc. I don't know what it is. Well, well Put my finger in your stay, mouth stay in, a, tuned. in a second. Okay. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care should not take up all of your energy. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using the free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with a few taps on their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash BNC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash BNC. ZocDoc.com slash BNC. Okay, well, I don't. I mean, we wish you the best. Mm-hmm. Feel free to get on ZocDoc and type in your symptoms. Yeah. And- no, I do think I I will go to urgent care after this if it persists. This sucks because what happened to Matt King yeah. and Carly is they both were talking about their possible appendicitis on their pod. And then by the time the podcast aired, they had both had their appendixes removed. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to be at the Grammys like Matt was. Right. Um, I don't know. If, Emmys. Can we tell that story? Emmys? Yeah, I don't think he'd care. Matt He's King. He's told it. Oh, yeah. Matt King was like texting in our group text. He was like, Hey, what does appendicitis feel like? <laughs> and I was like, um, you would know. And he's like, okay, I'm laying in a hallway <laughs> on the ground in a tux at the Emmys. Do you think that that would be it? And I go, you're going to want to go to the hospital <laughs> expeditiously. Yeah. And he did. And he was he was losing an organ that night, mm-hmm. the evening of the Emmys. Appendicitis is confusing, though, because there's so many variations. Like, by the time you get to the hospital, like, you could either have, like, a complete burst one or one that's just like a little inflamed and they won't even take it out. How many of our organs don't do anything anymore? Isn't Appendix? there a bunch? I feel like we're talking about Pluto joining and rejoining the planets. Get rid of it. Who fucking cares? Appendix, gallbladder. Take it out. I know a lot of people that have had their gallbladder removed. Imagine how much room I would have in my stomach You're if you got kidding. rid of all of these. Okay. Why, like, how, why have we not evolved okay. to not have these? Let's see. Below we review seven vestigal organs Vestigal? Okay, vestigial. We've never claimed to be an English podcast. (laughs) Below, we review seven vestigial organs, seven body parts we don't need. I should have just said that. (laughs) Um, So one, the appendix, obviously. Two, wisdom teeth, obviously. Do you still have yours? Three, the cockets. Coccyx. Coccyx are the tailbone sits at right. Yeah, I hate my coccyx. I have, I like bruised my coccyx so bad once that I could not walk. For four days. Get rid of my coccyx. So bad when you bruise that. The external ear. Have you ever watched a cat and seen his ears move when they notice an interesting sound? For many mammalian cousins, the external ear acts like a satellite dish. Like this piece? You could just cut this off and have... For for us humans, serving... Huh. You could just have a hole. Oh, you could just have the hole. Yeah. Ew. And I'm sure it has some sort of... Like, I guess you could literally just have a Voldemort nose. No, because no. But it I'm, serves the purpose of like protecting shit from getting in there. Uh, yeah. See, I would never. We've never claimed to be a medical podcast, but and I'm not going to speak against this this publication and the Universal University Health News Daily. Mm-hmm. But I like my male nipples. So so for me, for me, that's not a vestigial organ. Right. For me, that's they, no. It, they are serving a purpose because I do lactate time to time. Right, but it's not like what is coming out of you is not. Essential to life. Not only do men have nipples, but they also have a small amount of breast material. True. Men's nipples do not. I don't have big, heavy jugs. Right. But I do have. My male nipples do not have much of a function, but they do exist for a very good reason. Okay. Early on in the womb, every fetus starts as a female until the Y chromosome kicks in and the fetus develops as a male. In adolescence, the Y chromosome determines that the nipple and breast material do not develop into breasts. Okay. Well, me and Matt Reif. Ended up with a bunch of extra tissue under our nipples, and that's what I have in common with Matt. Didn't Matt he Rife. get them removed? He did, but his were his were an advanced, Perfect. in an advanced stage. Wait, what those? was number six? Okay, number six is the erector pili. Walk One through of, that. The sp- erector pili, smooth muscles in the skin, fluffed up thick hair, improving heat retention, or making them look bigger or more. Okay, I need more of these. Wait, what? Are, is what it, if anyone's getting bigger? 
Here's one of those often unnoticed vestigial organs, the arrestor pili. Our hairy ancestors were grateful for their erector pili when the weather was cold or when a predator approached. Erector pili, smooth muscles in the skin. Oh, erector pili, smooth muscles in the skin, fluffed up their thick hair, improving heat retention or making them look bigger or more threatening. Making what look bigger? Them, the, our hairy cousins. What do they call them? <laughs> our hairy ancestors. Erector pili contra contract when you receive a fight or flight or are cold to give you goosebumps and raise rather oh, humble so hairs. Oh, goosebumps. Erector pili or goosebumps. No, it's what's acting to give you goosebumps and stuff. It's like when a dog's attacking and their hair gets big. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, like when the, is it like when the hair stand up on your, Yeah. yeah. You get I'm sure erector pili are also in like <laughs> pigeons when they fluff up to so get big. Okay. And then the plecas, don't even get you me started. peacocks? Of, Pigeons do it too. Oh. Old birds like do that thing. Oh. Uh, also, don't even get me started about number seven, the plica similiaris. <laughs> Did you know you have a vest vestigial third eyelid? Birds, reptiles, and amphibians have a... Have a <sighs> they couldn't make these words a little easier. <laughs> Nicitating membrane. <laughs> a membrane that helps moisten and clean the eye. The plica similiaris is a small fold of tissue located inside the corner of your eye, the flap next to the bump in the corner of your eye. Oh, I don't feel that we don't at all. Have, no, because it's no. pigeons, reptiles, and amphibians. No, did you know we have a vestigial third eyelid? We have it. This is an article about the things that we don't need. Oh, I thought that was speaking about we as in amphibians and such. So we do need the gallbladder and stuff, right? I think it would help, but a lot of people I know <laughs> have gotten their gallbladder removed. And we do need two lungs, two livers, two no, kidneys. Well, no, no. We have two kidneys? We have one liver. One liver. You can have a little bit of it removed if need be. We have two kidneys. You can have one removed. We have two lungs. I, I'm i not sure if you can have a lung removed. You know what I always think about the two lungs and the two kidneys? Like West Virginia and Virginia. <laughs> like North and South Dakota. Oh, interesting. Let's see if you can have um, one of your lungs. Uh, you can live your life without one of your lungs. Uh, uh. One of your lungs, a kidney, your spleen, appendix, <laughs> gallbladder, adenoids, which I need removed, tonsils, plus some of your lymph nodes, the fibula bones from each leg. So you do not need either of your fibs. Hmm. You're completely useless. <laughs> Does that help? You can live without me, but your quality of life will decrease significantly. I don't think it will. Yeah, it will. Can you Google, will your quality of life decrease without your fibulae? Life without fibula. Life without fibulae. Fibular free flat. <laughs> Triple F. <laughs> okay, let's look here. Oh, okay, yeah, that first one. The fibular bone runs on the outside of the leg from the knee joint to the ankle joint. It is a small, thin bone, much of which can be removed without affecting your ability to walk or bear weight. <laughs> tough, tough not to swallow totally. over here. Totally. Um, okay. What happens if you lose your fibula? Um... Yeah, nothing. Okay. Okay. All righty, Rue, how was your weekend? It was good. I went to Dallas for a wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and Thursday night, I went to the D'Amelio shoe launch. Oh, yeah. And that was fun. It went really late, like later than I thought it was going to. And so I, like when I finally got home, I was like, all right, I'm going to set all my stuff, get ready tonight. So, you know, it's, it was already packed, everything. Uh -huh. I put everything at the door put all my stuff at the door my roommate had laundry in the laundry machine i moved it to the dryer i like made coffee put it in the fridge ready to take it ready to go brush floss um and then didn't plug in my phone mm -hmm. so i did not wake up for my original flight right which is fine because i woke up like half an hour after it was still so early in the morning uh-huh but there was only one other direct flight and it was on spirit i've never flown spirit me neither i'm not better than spirit i'm not saying that at all I've just never had the opportunity presented where that was my only option. Well, that's awesome that you were able to get this opportunity presented. I will tell you that the terminal that I was in, in at LAX felt like, um, you know, when you go to like a Kmart and you're like, never been, to is Kmart. this still like a part of the store? Why are none of the lights on? Like, <laughs> you know, like, are these people, do you live in this mm -hmm. Kmart? Um, that's what it felt like mm -hmm. here. Like every, it smelled like, sh like shit, honestly, mm -hmm. like the terminal, there was actual, 
smell like poop. <laughs> and uh, the the gate agents are yelling at people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where? It's because they ha- they have nothing to lose. No, they don't. They th- so I'm, their I'm, reputation I'm, could not get worse. I'm sitting there. Um, I'm like, all right, whatever. I just need to get to my destination. And it was just like a crazy experience. I don't even want to, I don't even know if I can tell this story. So like, I don't want to get in trouble, but like there was a woman in front of me that was like, uh, like not speaking English, but she was sitting in the exit around there. And the lady was like, you need to speak English or move. Oh my just, God. Like, moved her over. And then she comes to me and she goes, are you willing and able to assist? Cause I was in the exit row next, uh-huh. right next to that woman. And she goes, I go, yes. And she goes, people, this is the answer I was looking for. And I go, don't want to be oh my the God, example that's, that's here. That's fully abusive. I was like, I do not want to be the example for you. Right. I was like, I I had my hat all the way down. I was like, you know, teacher's pet over here at Spirit Airlines Gate 18A. Um, that was an accident. And then I sat down, obviously, um, whatever experience. It was from, this, from the beginning. It's like just tough, like getting on the plane. They're kind of rickety. Or I'm just over aware of like the plane itself i'm like okay this is like rickety because you know your way around it don't tell me i know the no word. i'm just, no 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 don't, there's a word i'm looking for it's the the cock not the cockpit the not the phalange either the shaft of the plane not the shaft the you're so close do you know what i'm you know what i'm thinking of is it a v or an f it's an f what's the second letter you fa foo Few, few slotch. Yeah, yes. nice. Okay, good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Tinder. With Tinder, it starts with a swipe. So many possibilities are really just a match away. As you guys have heard, Tinder is the world's most popular dating app. That means the most opportunity to find whatever it is you're looking for. So true. Yeah. And that also means success on Tinder can mean whatever you want it to. Yep. Whether you're looking for love, a date, or a casual chat, Tinder has got you covered. Every week, 1.5 million Tinder users go on an IRL date. That's that's in real life. That's a physical mm-hmm. in-person date. Um, while other apps can be hard, Tinder is easy and fun. Tinder also just released Relationship Goals, a new status for your profile that shows what types of connections you're looking for. Relationship Goals is just one of many features that Tinder has released to make sure you're comfy on the app. It also has more safety features than any other dating app, so your dating experience is not only fun, but also safe. On Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Download Tinder today and explore all of the possibilities for yourself. I do I do know my way around the fuselage. And so I'm like, whatever, I sit down. And then, oh, I took all these notes. We kind of started hitting like a lot of turbulence, which like I think for a Spirit Airlines flight is just like normal flying. Right. Oh, I, t- I took a bunch of notes actually. Okay. One, here's one note. Does anyone notice how when you step out of the airport and not the first thing into that that tunnel jet bridge going under the plane, you immediately lose service on your phone, even if you're not on Wi-Fi and you're sitting on the tarmac? Does every does anyone notice that? Yeah. They probably put blockers out there, huh? I I have service sometimes. Like when you first start to take off, you have service, but like when you get on the plane and sit down, like you do not have service. I just learned that there are people that don't put their phone in airplane mode. There's no point in not because once you're in the air, like you can't. Right. I didn't. I thought. I truly thought if you didn't have your phone on airplane mode, complete disaster. Like tr- <laughs> fatal. Like if one person had their phone off airplane mode, that would take the plane down. That was my understanding. Well, that was my understanding about not turning your car off when you're getting gas. That's also my understanding. But I did it, and I, my car was fine. Everyone's like, it's fine to do that. I'm like, now I, if I go, if I if I die like that, that's just embarrassing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My dad said it doesn't matter if you put your phone on airplane mode. And he's a pilot? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll never fly Spirit again. Um, obviously, sit down. Baby starts crying. Someone is listening to, like, a podcast out loud. Uh-huh. So that was something else. Yeah. It was actually so loud that I had my headphones and I could hear. Oh, damn. Yeah, so that was crazy. Um, and you got some pushback because you use cord headphones. Headphones with a cord. Yeah. Why? What do I do that? Uh huh. I bring a pair of corded headphones because if my AirPods die, I can Smart. charge them and then plug my headphones in. Genius. But also, if I'm on the phone, my my audio is way better on a corded oh, headphone. Oh, oh, 
You're big headphones in while talking on the phone, guy. Yeah, because yeah. I gotta be scrolling on Instagram while I'm on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Copy, copy, copy. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. So, whatever. We land. I I had to make myself fall asleep because I was so nervous. Mm-hmm. All when we're about to land, my friends texted me. Um. Hey, they're they're not letting people land in Dallas. They're rerouting to Austin, and I'm like, oh shoot. Spirit Airlines, <laughs> right through the eye of the storm. <laughs> now, uh, they move forward with going through the storm. Complete landing. Seeing as they probably have nothing to lose. Right. So we're going through. I'm like <laughs> bouncing and I'm like, there's no way. And then I'm thinking, everyone has a life jacket under their seat. Give me a goddamn parachute. I don't, if I land in the water, I can swim. Yeah. I can tread water j- for enough time until I need to. Why wouldn't they have parachutes on planes? It's so confusing. You're giving me a life jacket for something that might happen. But a, be- a bigger probability to me, we lose a wing. Yeah. What is that? Just screws holding those wings against the fuselage? Uh, yeah. I agree. I've, se- I've seen plenty of shelves fall off a wall in my day. Those are screws. There's no reason. Like if, God forbid, there's an incident in the air where the plane is going to fall out of why, the air. Why not? Why not have why a parachute not? to save your life? Pop Pop off like the back, like have an emergency release for the back of the plane and everyone runs and jumps. Are you too high up to to live via parachuting that high? Well, you can't just pop your parachute out immediately. You got to wait till you're closer to the ground. I know. I'm sure it would be absolute chaos in the air. Angry Birds style. Oh my God. I'm sure people's parachutes would get tied together. Is that fine? No, it's no, that would be like catastrophic. Uh Would you skydive? Fuck no. Me neither. No. No. Let. Let me finish. So oh. we go through. Sorry. No, I, I'm on board with the parachute no, thing. No, you're good. <laughs> Here's the thing. Give us a chance, a fighting chance. If the plane's going down, what, we just have to text our parents? <laughs> Let me try to figure out a parachute. Like, no, I've never skydived. No, I'm not trained. Let me just, let me just see if I can do it. Because at this point, I'm going down anyways. The only thing I have left to do is send off, shoot off a couple texts. Hey, I'm not going to make it to that 3 o'clock Zoom. Sorry, I think we're going down. Uh, give me a parachute. Because mm-hmm. it's the same outcome if I don't figure out the parachute versus if the plane hits the ground. By the way, someone was telling me on a plane, uh, someone was telling me this weekend when I landed that this move, when, when you're going down in a plane and you put your head forward, the reason they do that is because you're still going to die, but then they can, um, if you sit like this, you're, you're going to be in the seat that was assigned to you when you perish so they can identify the bodies if they're like unidentifiable. Oh. Pretty dark. Sorry. Um, but in a parachute situation, you might be landing anywhere, but you'll be okay. Yeah. If you figure it out. <clears throat> Anyways. All right. I'll lighten the mood. So we go, we're going, we're going down, uh, not like in a fatal sense, but it felt like it. And the, f- we go start going down and then we start going back up. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, that ain't right, but you know, consider the situation. Mm-hmm. It's whatever. I see the airport. We go past it. I go, okay, that is that's not an ideal situation. And then the the pilot comes on. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> this is your uh, captain speaking. We uh we were going uh, too fast to land back there, so we are making a U turn and we're gonna we're gonna try that one more time. I go. Didn't need to All know that. All for second chances. Uh, what do you mean you were going too fast to land? That seems like something you wouldn't go on a, on a on a bus with someone said, oh, that red light just popped up out of nowhere. We were going too fast. We're going to roll through that and make a U-turn and try it again. It's sorry, good that he sorry, had we, noticed. Uh, sorry we uh, barreled through that red light back there. We were going a little too fast to stop. I think it's great that he kn- he knew. He had recognized that mistake. So That's just... Took that learning experience into account. Tried again. And I bet you landed the second time. That is not like the sentiment anyone else had. Right. I guess. Because I think think when you're in a situation where your life is in someone's hands, much like getting your hair cut, and the barber says, oops. Like, there's a couple places you don't want to hear something like that. Honestly, your life is in someone else's hands every second of every day. Like, theoretically, Kenny could just, like, stab you right now. You know, and and he might. You you literally never know. There's um, no difference between you sitting on this set and you being in a plane that that can't land. 
I could literally decide to. I'm having intrusive thoughts. This is the definition of intrusive thought. No, 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 go on. No. Um, okay, so that's all I was going to say. And then on my way home, obviously the wedding was amazing. Had no no hiccups mm-hmm. at all. It's kind of a bummer when like nothing happens at a wedding. Like we had nothing bad happen. And then it's like, okay, so what do we talk about? It was just like a gorgeous day. Amazing wedding. So much fun. Also, I've been to so many weddings recently that I feel like I could plan a wedding start to finish. I'm okay, thank you. Oh, my my appendix is making me not want to eat, so you can have my applesauce. Um, and you can have the calf that you thank want. You. You're welcome. But it was great. We danced the night away. It was really fun. And then it was just mellow. That being said, it was so mellow that like I got home and I was like, oh, nice. Like It was great. We had a fun time. Everyone drank and drank, drunk and be merry. What's it called? Drink and be merry? Dr- drink and be merry, yeah. And then I got home and I like go up to go to bed and I'm all tucked in and brush my teeth, floss. And then I'm like, oh, I forgot my phone charger downstairs. Can't make that mistake again because I was leaving the next day. So I go to walk down the stairs, miss a step. And I tumble down a full flight of stairs. That's a good um, ick. (laughs) Like, girls, if you're liking a guy too much right now, go ahead and think of them in the situation that Connor just described. And you'll be cured. (laughs) No, and it, it was... It was so bad because no, that's what I looked like. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, I so I I didn't want to turn on any lights because I was staying at my friend's house and they were all asleep, and I'm like I'm just gonna sneak down. I kind of know their house is pitch black, and yeah. So I I miss this step and I fall and I I hit and then I roll forward and then I my legs fall over top of me. I fell the down the entire flight of stairs, and then I was just sitting there like. If you ever stub your toe or anything when you're by yourself, it's like, what the, f- it's so, it's almost worse than what's if someone saw it. I'm yeah. like, what's the point of me hurting myself right now? Yeah. Can't even say ow. And then I was like, you know. Do you say ow when you're alone? I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs because it hurt so bad. Uh huh. And I didn't have any proof the next day. So it was like, there was nothing there, but I'm going to show everybody if you're watching on video, this bruise on my thigh. And I wore underwear today, so I could show you. Okay. Are you disrobing? I'm just, yeah, I'm taking my pants off. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> I have to. Yeah, I know. Wait, I'll show I'll show you first. I'll show from back here. Oh my gosh, Connor. That's the worst. Does it still hurt? Did you see it? Yeah? Yeah, it hurts. I'm um, sorry. No, it's okay. And what's what's funny about that is that I have that same bruise on my mm-hmm. ass because yeah. I hit every angle of myself going down. So it's that bruise all the way to my ass and then down here and on my ankle too. Oh my God, do you want to come to the butt ward of urgent care with me after this? <laughs> You're going to have to get the iron lung on your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Earth Breeze. Have you ever wondered why laundry detergent comes in massive plastic jugs? Oh my God, I've never... Get I've this. never put those pieces together Get until this. you said that. 91% of those inconvenient, awkward, heavy jugs end up in landfills and oceans, harming our planet and marine life. Brooke, there I has did, to be a better way. There has to be. I never realized the toll that these massive jugs were taking on, on our On marine planet. life, yeah. And it's not like you can just stop doing laundry. So what I did, switch to Earth Breeze. Hmm. Well, the cool thing about Earth Breeze laundry detergent eco sheets is that they look like dryer sheets but they're not it's a revolutionary liquidless laundry detergent that dissolves 100 percent in any wash cycle hot or cold no measuring no mass and no massive plastic heavy life-threatening jugs um just toss that sheet in it's funny i bought these i bought these sheets um before earth breeze was even a sponsor and they do. They are so tiny and they mm-hmm. fit in the thing. And then, then you realize how much space your massive jugs are taking up. Exactly. In your house. Right. And, so and life without and jugs you, has been pretty good. Yeah. When I reduced my jug intake, uh-huh. it, yeah, my life and my the quality of life improved. Also, carrying those massive jugs around a grocery store. You were probably exhausted. How was your back? Oof. Yeah. You had no idea. I bet I don't. The packaging is lightweight, biodegradable, and plastic-free, and great for all laundry lifestyles, even sensitive skin. Their eco-sheets are hypoallergenic, 
hypoallergenic that is, and dermatologist tested. Plus, Earth Breeze is compatible with HE, high efficiency washers, gray water systems, and septic safe as well. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Shark Talk, and I've learned a lot about marine life and how important it is to keep our oceans clean. That's why I love using Earth Breeze, because not only does it get my clothes clean and smelling nice, but it's also helping the earth while limiting the amount of heavy jugs in the ocean, all That's while making laundry day easier. Plus, Earth Breeze is delivered right to your door via free carbon neutral shipping at a frequency you can set that works for your unique lifestyle. They offer flexible subscriptions that can be adjusted, paused, or canceled by you at any time. No contracts or fees. It's weird because we're just raised in this world where we're like massive jugs are so normalized massive plastic jugs my mom always came home with her massive plastic jugs and I'm, i just thought that was normal right and now we live in this world where we don't need to rely on these jugs any longer because most importantly you're still going to get a powerful clean from earth breeze it's tough on stains it fights odors and your clothes come out clean every single time don't just take my word for it you can try for yourself with a risk-free 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, Earth Breeze will give you a full refund, no questions asked, and no return necessary. Switch from the old-fashioned goo to something new. Right now, our listeners can subscribe to Earth Breeze and save 40%. You can go to earthbreeze.com slash bnc to get started. That's earthbreeze.com slash bnc for 40% off. earthbreeze.com slash bnc. Thank you, Earth Breeze. Like that, that oh my God. mom and robot. I told you about the iron lung, right? Yeah, we talked. We had a segment on it last week. Okay, <laughs> was that in the bonus or? Um, I don't. I think it was. Yeah, because we we watched stuff. Well, if I could just tell everybody in the main to go watch the movie "Breathe" about the polio uh, epidemic in the 1950s, featuring the iron lungs as well as respirators, you guys will not be disappointed. It is the most uplifting and tragic story. Continue. Okay, I'll just roll through this all the way. So, whatever. I get on my flight on the way home. I miss my connection because my flight was delayed out of Dallas. I had to stay in Denver. And then my next, the next flight getting home was overlapping with a call that I had. Mm -hmm. And so I had to wait three hours to take that call at the Denver airport before I could go on to the next flight. Because it, it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't land in time to take the call if I took you, the later flight. Oh, so you didn't want to, you wouldn't reschedule the call? No, because it had been scheduled so far in advance, it was an important one. So I was like... Who was with? I'll tell you offline. So anyways, I have to I take the call, and then the next flight was in, in 45 minutes after the call. Canceled. Just straight up, just canceled. Okay. No explanation. Great. Next flight is at 7.45 p.m. So I had like a 20-hour travel day that for a two-and-a-half-hour flight. Mm -hmm. And then I get on this flight. It is perfectly coincided with the LAX Nuggets game. Or the LAX Nuggets game. <laughs> The Lakers Nuggets game. What's a Nugget game? <laughs> <laughs> it's like when um, I don't even have anything to say. I literally like have no idea what you could basketball. Oh, it's a it's a team. Yeah. Who the hell are the Nuggets? I love that they're called the Nuggets. Yeah. Like what a, what state are they what from? Country? <laughs> Denver. Oh my god. So, so imagine Nuggets. me on a flight from Denver to LA during this game. Anyways. Do they mean nuggets as in like chicken nuggets? No, gold nuggets, I think. Did you ever have those toys, go go's when you were a kid? No. They were like these little just like pieces of plastic that were also like somehow like monsters and creatures and you would set them up in a, some sort of formation and the person that you were playing across from would set their go-go's up in a formation and you would flick them at each other and try to yeah. knock each other's oh, they, they go-go's like, like down like green beans. those go-go's okay. and there was a golden bone of a go-go and i think there were only like 10 golden go-go's ever and this one guy in my school got the golden bone and it was like the most insane thing that's ever happened in the history of pennsylvania that's like, crazy. Including Gettysburg, the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, Can you look up the Golden Go-Go bone? This thing is gorgeous. I bet you could buy it on eBay for thousands. Uh, Did I make it up? Oh, my God. I get it. Crazy bones. Yeah. I can I don't, picture it. You can picture it? I can it? picture it. When you were oh describing God. it, I could I see it. I wish that it was socially acceptable for me to collect something like that nowadays. A lot of people are doing Legos. Mm, that doesn't 
I don't feel like I want to collect Legos. I used to collect pencils when I was a kid. I think you told us that. Oh, and pillows. <sighs> Speaking of the devil, my mom texted me and was like, sent me a picture of my old pillowcase and it was all frogs and jungle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, and then I, my brain goes, you just getting rid of stuff that holds a lot of memories again? And she goes, yeah, I'm in the upstairs linen closet cleaning it out. And I go, hey, like really not a room that you spend a ton of time in. So you don't need to clean it out now. Have her send you that. That would be such I a- I don't have room for it. I'm no, just like- wear it. Use it as your pillowcase. Nah. Are you serious? Yeah, it's pretty. It's got a lot going on. That's so fun. M- repurpose it. I'm going to take a sewing class. You want me to repurpose it for you? Maybe. I think she did already get rid of it. It's funny because when I die, I'll have no memory of my life on this earth because my mom has thrown everything away. You know what, Connor? You know what you could do? Cut off the top of the pillowcase so it's just like a little strip and then make that the strap of a tote bag. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just like the things my brain can do. It's amazing. (sighs) Well, let's let's see if your brain can do this. (laughs) We should talk about something that is pertinent for this week. Pertinent meaning whatever it like means. Trends. I would rather go through our notes app because that's like a trend. Okay. On TikTok, where they're like, it's I don't exactly remember the premise of the trend, but it's basically just like going through the notes on your phone. P- period. Perfect. I think I do that every single day. Yeah, but like old ones that you like don't exactly know what they mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. For do you want me to start? Yeah, why don't you start? Okay, no problem. I did already post some of these. So sorry if you have seen them. Oh my god. I can't share this one. But Brittany, as in Brittany Broski, she came on our pod a long time ago and she confided in us bravely that she had written a fan fiction in the past about Cole Sprouse, specifically Cole Sprouse coming home from war. And suffering with PTSD as she is there to comfort him. And she found it the other day and I got to read it. So this note is just the quotes that really profoundly moved me from her fan fiction. We have to cut this out? No, I'm just not going to read the specific quotes. But I feel like the luckiest woman in the world for getting to read that fan fiction. She is a brilliant mind. There is nothing that woman can't do. I am obsessed with Brittany Broski. She's my favorite author. She should write a book. She, I, she, I like... She should expand on the fan fiction. I'm not joking. Like, I wasn't reading it being like, ha ha, oh, Brittany. I was like, I need more. I need to know how Cole gets through this. Well, luckily, you know the author. I know. I've asked her for I've <laughs> asked her for a second chapter. And she's considering. Um. Okay, I have one. Okay. Cigarette edibles. Ooh. I don't know. That's the whole thing. Like note. a nicotine edible? Marlboro brownie. So. Um, That's good. This is a note called Moments for a Show, where I just write things that I think would be funny if I ever write a show one day, and there's one thing on it. It says, girl can't figure out why she isn't getting any hinge matches, but her profile is five pictures of her and the same guy, which I had accidentally done on my hinge profile because I was showing my therapist. And she said, as she had brought to my attention, that Patrick, my friend Patrick, was in all five images. Mm-hmm. And so she suggested that I take him out of at least three. And I did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Your turn. Maybe this isn't a good segment because I'm just like looking through my notes. I'm not, I can't find anything. Oh, I think it's, well, I have more. I'm, I don't, I'm getting stressed. Okay. Places you can bury me and then just Nordstrom Cafe. <laughs> and then a quote, hey, things happen. It was no one's fault, unquote, me talking to myself after almost causing a head-on collision by going straight in a turning lane. <laughs> and then people that should co-host a podcast, Larry David and Trisha Paytas. Which, by the way, did you see Trisha has a new podcast? Mm-mm. Trisha has a new podcast with Colleen Ballinger. I don't know who that is. Miranda Sings. Oh, really? Yeah. So that should be interesting. Because I didn't, like, also I'd be curious if it's her and Miranda Sings' character or her as Colleen. I feel like she'd have to do the Miranda Sings character. As if Trish, I can't believe Trisha has time to do a podcast. Okay, this note says, photo in my leather pants with Ross in leather pants, mixed eye period. I love it. 
Fascinating. This one, handshake in the Hamptons. Hampton spelled with an H A M P T O M S. Hamptoms. Handshakes in the Hamptoms. Things could be worse. You could be at the Verizon store. That's good. You're right. The segment blows This is going to be bad. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. We always say this isn't a numbers podcast, but there is no denying prices have been crazy high lately. When I was at the gas station last week, I was absolutely shocked to see how high the prices have gotten. That's why you left with the the gas pump to get your money you said i'm taking something with i'm I'm stealing something that's why whenever i find a deal when i'm shopping it feels like i just won the lottery and honestly a huge relief on my wallet thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past i feel even dumb telling people what honey is because i feel i to me i feel like everyone knows what honey is but honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites and you've loaded up your carts with a bunch of goodies. And when you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds, Honey searches the internet for coupons you can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. What do we say, Brooke? Honey? Honey? I shrunk shrunk your your total. total. It's funny you mentioned filling up your cart with goodies because that's exactly (laughs) what I did a few nights ago when I was shopping for new shoes. It was so easy. All I had to do was press the little honey icon in my browser, and I saved 20% on a pair of new Nikes. Cool. Yeah. Honey doesn't just work on a desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. That's crazy that they added it on your phone. Um, Because I feel like I'm doing a lot of just, like, when you buy stuff on your phone, you're just, like, you buy it, and, like, you don't even realize. Like, you're in a like a haze you're just like oh yeah yeah apple pay yeah so to have it on your phone is good and it allows you to be more intentional about your purchasing well if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show which is awesome as well but you'd be dumb just not to have paypal honey it's it's actually carelessness Mm -hmm. get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash bnc that's joinhoney.com slash b-a-n-d-c thanks honey did you see this blue couch thing that's going viral? Kind of. Like, I don't think I'm fully, like, understanding it. There was just a couch on the side of the road that's super expensive. Why is Jeffrey Epstein trending again? <laughs> so there was just a couch on the side okay, of the road. Okay, this is my understanding. I, wasn't, I didn't see this TikTok before, but I just, like, saw all these edits of this so someone was like, hey, my client left this couch out on the street last night. Uh-huh. Has anyone seen it? It had all these retweets. And I was like, what? What is this? And everyone's like, ha, ha, ha. And there's all these edits of the blue couch, blue couch, blue couch, blue couch. Like, And um, these people, I guess, found this blue couch on the side of the road, cleaned it, and then put it in their apartment, and it looks sick. And then the whole internet has had an opinion on this blue couch. Like, People are trying to say that like they left it out on the street, they were moving, and you stole it. Oh. So that they could get it back. Because it's like, I guess it's like an eight, $8,800 couch. But now it's one of those things. What did you compare it to yesterday? It was like, everyone has an opinion on oh, it. Oh, that uh, TikTok of that uh, girl going to surprise her boyfriend and everyone thought that he was cheating on her based off of the yes. way he reacted. Yeah, it's yeah. like, why does everyone pick something so random and like insignificant to care about so deeply? Like, who, I'm just like, who who gives? Well, everyone's like, that's disgusting. It's definitely, like, why would they get rid of it? Probably, it probably has bed bugs. People do this all the time. I don't know. Everyone's, everyone's taking it really all of, personally. Everyone I know has something in their apartment from the street. Um, yeah, I guess, like, something soft, and it looked like it had, um, for lack of a better word, cum stains all over mm-hmm. it. I... I think that I would be wary. I believe in the power of a good scrubbing. But one, I feel like they should have called a professional. That's my only, yeah. That's my yeah. only thing is that. Do that thing with the machine. They did, but they did it once. I feel like it needs to be power washed. I'm fine. I'm like, but I'm like, I'm really not. Like, I'll wear my shoes in my bed. Like, I don't, I don't give a hoot. <laughs> I wouldn't want to bury my face in this couch, though. And you know what? The awesome thing is, you don't have to. And they don't have to bury their face in the couch. 
They can just sit their butts on it. Heard the crazy story last night at a party, but buddy of mine found this $8,000 couch in an abandoned building, took it home, found out it's haunted, and the ghost of a Victorian child would rise off of it every night at 3 a.m., stare at him blankly. He threw the couch on the sidewalk last week. So people are just like making up lore about this couch, which I kind of love. It's kind of like a beautiful thing that brings, it's bringing the whole city together. Uh, yeah, Talking I wish it was just couch. like something else though. It's just like so stupid to me. I think it's kind of fun because it's harmless. The boyfriend girlfriend thing sparked so much like, right. things between people and like guys are coming in like, well, if she's not going to drive and see him every weekend, what do you expect? He's He has he's a man that has needs. Like, cause he was like blatantly, obviously cheating on her. I just don't get why people care. That was just like a weird, I think it's just like something fun to do. Yeah. I wouldn't wouldn't put that, I wouldn't put that in my apartment. I have to say, here's, here's what I would do if I found that couch. Sell it. Almost $10,000 couch. Sell it. I just like, I I just like don't care. I am having trouble understanding why so many people do, you know? Like it's just because there's nothing else. There's nothing else going on. I feel like there is if you look a little bit, a little bit hard. Like watch a show. Like literally do. I know when stuff like this goes viral, I'm like, aren't we in at least one war? Like, uh, like I know I focus on a lot of stuff that's stupid, but like this to me, I'm just like, come on. I care more about this than like Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet. I'm just like, like I just feel like I'd rather watch a movie. I'd rather read an article about this blue couch and. And the ins and outs of the fabric and the stitching, then and and the cleaning process, then um, I, I can't think of anything else. Mm-hmm. See, now I'm, I guess I'm pro blue chair. Yeah, I'm anti. I just like I I'm I don't get it um, at all. Well, I would love to find something like that on the street. We have we're really just not in it today. I'm not. I'm <laughs> being so down today. Like I have nothing. Nothing to offer. No, you're good. Oh wait, you had a good story. We should we should I talk did? about the Warriors Snap Instagram story thing that they were logged into their ins- that wizards. Oh yeah. Okay, take it away. <laughs> okay. Did you see someone I guess the social media intern on the Wizards basketball team social media like didn't log out of their Snapchat and posted a Snapchat of oh, I guess one of her friends that was like, I was trying to figure out why it smelled so bad. Jesse's out here just doing the stanky leg in public. So whoever the intern is is filming her friends ch- drinking high noons and and hitting a stanky leg. Mm-hmm. Um, I something I've done posted on the Warriors public Snapchat story. It could have been so much worse. Could you imagine? Well, I've done two things that are really bad. One is that I was taking a picture of um, my tan lines. And I like fully like boobs out and to send to my friends, like yeah. not in like a sexual way, just like in a normalized bodies way. Yeah. And I had put it on my story and I, I like knew that it was uploading to my story right away and I caught it right away. But my mom, my grandma has, I don't know how she even figured out how to do this alerts on for when I post a Snapchat story. Oh. So she was able to see that, which is like fine. Cause like, She's my grandma. So that's like, I don't mind her seeing my boobs, but like, it's just the fact that like, she like got that notification immediately, but she was the only one to see it, wow. which is great. The second thing, which is not Snapchat related is really awful. Um, the, uh, the, a boy that I had had a crush on in high school. Okay. The boy that I had had a crush on in high school posted. And at this point I was a senior in college. And so was he posted his like senior thesis. I think on Twitter or something or Facebook, like a Google Doc to it. And I I had opened it just to see what he was working on. And I left it open. And you could see on Google Docs, like who was viewing the doc. So he texted me after I had not heard from him in four years. Hey, what are you doing still on my senior thesis doc? Because I had left that tab open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I had did not I was did not I did not respond. Then I had X out of the uh, out of the thesis app, out of the thesis. That sucks. That, that just like, sucks. That wasn't even funny. Have you sent any texts? The funniest thing to me, first of all, the funniest thing to me ever is when people's Instagram gets hacked and they're suddenly offering me a Range Rover like or or something like mm-hmm. crypto, and they're like, "You need to get in touch. I'm having the best 
success story ever or buy one get one ray bands i think that's the funniest thing in the world god forbid if it happened to me I, you would never see me again i would off myself i'll be dead by morning yeah i but, would delete every sort of account that i've ever had but when i see it's happened to someone i'm on my knees crying laughing the 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 fun, second funniest thing is when people send this happened to me a couple people have done this to me where you send someone's instagram story to the person but you even send it to your friends because now when you send it oh Insta- that is the when worst. you when you send a post or an instagram story the first person to pop up at the top is respond to this person it's like no if i was responding i would swipe up and right. respond. they need to if I'm remove forwarding that this, if I'm, I'm forwarding this so my oh, i can't talk about it, but there so many people will send and be like what the fuck like people have done it to me and i get it and it's like this is so fucking dumb and i get the thing and i'm like all right you don't have to like you don't have to mm-hmm. do it and they're like oh no 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 i meant to say i'm like you're good you're fucked right you're good well but, sometimes i'll just send i've done it before where i've sent somebody's story but with no text yeah like i've just sent the story like making fun of them but luckily i didn't write anything so they didn't know i was making fun of they them know. so i said love this by the way <laughs> that's so, good yeah um have you ever sent a screenshot of your text to the person that you were screenshotting yes yeah and I said, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. I said, hey, my messages aren't going through. This is the last one I have from you. Is this all that? Oh, both of those are good. Yeah. 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 Two options if available to you. So if you send a screenshot of an existing conversation to someone else, either say, I'm sure there's better options too, but I, I always say, hey, I don't, can't tell if my messages are going through. They're going through green. Is, is this all you have as well? And then Brooke says, "I say I just want to make sure I'm get, I'm understanding this correctly." Read this because, from my perspective because usually, if you're screenshotting something, it's like something controversial-ish that yeah. you would want to make sure yeah. that you were understanding correctly because you're about to send it to someone else. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, what do we think about this poor intern that's probably turning up to the office? In my opinion, I'm like these things because it's harmless. You lucked out. Yeah. I'm sure that. The Warriors, the Wizards, oh, the Wizards, um, are being, they're probably trended for a second. And I, like, we probably wouldn't be talking about the Warriors. Warriors, what is wrong with me? The Wizards on our podcast, if if she hadn't done this. Huge basketball day. Huge. Nuggets, Wizards, Lakers. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Do you love basketball? Mm-hmm. Are you a basketball chica? Mm-hmm. Have you ever played basketball? Yes. I told you I was in the student teacher basketball game. I don't think you have. Yeah, I have. My school did a basketball game with some select teachers, one teacher from every department and one student, one boy and one girl from every grade. And I was on the, I made the team. Nice. I think they just wanted to see what would happen. How'd it go? And randomly, I had been benched all of it. Oh, that sucks. Like, don't put me on the team if you're going to bench me. Let me show you what I've got. Put me but in, I did coach. once win. No- uh, did you ever play knockout in school? Yeah, I won a game of grade wide knockout. Oh, I, nice! I was I had gotten permission to knockout. do granny shots. Yeah, you know well, that's not which illegal. is by the way not cheating. No, no, that's totally fine. Yeah, I completely that's agree. That's just house rules. Uh-huh. You know? It's like, are you going to be cool with this because it's not illegal in actual basketball? Right. LeBron James could granny shoot if you f- felt up to it. Uh huh. Um, speaking maybe of, he would maybe they would have maybe the Lakers would have won last night if he had a couple granny shots in there. Speaking of wizards. Yeah. S- do you know of, do you know about the musical Wicked? I do I know of it, do yeah. Do you do you know what it's about? Um a witch. Do you know who? Uh, I've wait, just been thinking a lion, how insane this plot is. A like, lion, a witch, and a wardrobe. It's it's Wizard of Oz. It's the story of Wizard of Oz, basically, but told through the Wicked Witches perspective so it's her origin story yeah like in her schooling days through the events of wizard of oz and get this huh. this is the craziest part to me there's an incredible love story in wicked between alphabet who's the wicked witch and fiero and turns out in pr- trying to protect her fiero gets kidnapped and she does a spell to try to keep him safe but he ends up turning into a scarecrow and that's the origin of the <sighs> scarecrow. It's her. It's her love. It's her love interest. How nuts is that? That's brilliant. What sucks though isn't the scarecrow against 
That's what they want you to think, Connor. But he was a double agent the whole time. He was like friends with Dorothy this whole time. And then once Dorothy made um, Alphabet melt, he had actually accessed some sort of trap door. I'm a little fuzzy on the details, but that was actually how he allowed her. He like got her to escape Oz because she was being vilified for being wicked. But she actually wasn't wicked. She's a great girl. And he had somehow been involved in this trap door scheme while Dorothy was melting her. Double agent. Uh, maybe I'll look into watching it because I'm, I'm lost. You can't a little watch bit. it because it's on, on Broadway. Unless could, you want to go to go there. I could no. I could just watch the movie Wicked. Probably it's not out. I bet I could find it online. A play of Wicked. Oh, you mean like a bootleg? Sure. Of the show. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the Ariana Grande movie that's not out. Oh, I didn't know there was a movie. Yeah, with Ariana Grande as Glinda coming out next year or two years. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Speaking of movies. Can fist, 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 Fisting Festival is happening. Oh my God, no way. Uh, can Film Festival is happening. And everyone's there. Except us. Yet I don't again. think everyone's there. Yeah, everyone's there. I think there. the people that you're seeing that are there are sure they might be influencers, but they're there because of other reasons. They're not there for their influencing abilities. They're there because they have other sort of connections. I think they're being... I think it's obviously it's people that need to be there. I'm, I'm being annoying but we're not going to can um ever brooke not in this space you don't say that because i want to go i how do i get to be a waiter at the oscars i want to i want to go get an airbnb nearby like book it in advance and then go and have everyone think i'm going to things and not posting because i'm not allowed to i just want to get into the venue i'll be a waiter i'll be an usher i'll be whatever izzy was saying that this guy couldn't get tickets to taylor swift so he Apply to be a security guard and he got it. Where can I apply to be a security guard? Um, I want to be a security guard on, at the Oscars. Online, you totally can. Oh my oh, God, here. I would let like so much like crime. Happen. Here's a video of him. Something happens viral at every one of her shows, don't, don't, doesn't it? It's bound to happen when there's a million people in a That's room. That's true. If there's a million people yeah. in a room. I thought, I didn't realize that he like was a f- like that's why he applied to be a security guard i thought he just happened to be a security guard who was a fan i didn't realize that he applied to be a security guard uh, how get- weird would it be to be like facing she's right behind him yeah and he- he's facing a group of girls oh i'd be turning around oh no but this is someone who's good at their job yeah he's passionate uh, much like a waiter holding five i mean plates he's gonna do everything fajitas. he's gonna do everything he can to keep taylor safe as a fan that's true like that's what I'm saying. Imag- I'm going to do everything I- in my power to keep everybody at the Oscars safe because chances are I'm in love with half of them. Um, one of my friends waited outside of Daisy Lady, Crazy Lady Studios or whatever. She's recording her mm-hmm. and saw her, waited for two hours outside and was like the first one in row and she walked out. Wow. She walked out alone. Alone? Alone. 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 That is the most Jarring wild episode, of, episode of SpongeBob I've ever seen in my life. It is so introspective and so vastly mind blowing that like it's 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 hard to comprehend. If anyone knows what we're talking about, that's an episode that makes you feel something. I uh, it's it's oh that's when they travel to the caveman era to the f- future future and when Squidward gets stuck in the freezer like that's the most claustrophobic I've ever felt while watching something. But it's funny because you f- you see you see him he goes I, I want to oh sorry. This episode's all over the place. I think it's because I had a weird amount of coffee today. Okay. Not too much, not too little. I think it's because I had the right amount of coffee. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, do you ever read, sorry, I just remembered. Do you ever read um, those those people online, like on Reddit, those people that have so much time and they do like a deep dive about the deeper meanings behind characters on cartoon shows? Yes. Like about how on Rugrats, like everybody's dead and Chucky's the only one that's actually mm-hmm. alive. They say that about Phoebe from Friends, too, that everything's a hallucination in her brain. Those are fascinating yeah. to me. But how much time could you have? That's why I like taking things at face value. Why think? Connor, you are describing a song from Wicked to a T. Dancing through life. That's what Fierro says. Why put effort into anything when you can simply just dance through life? Brooke, I've had an issue with this quote for my entire life called Question Everything. I think it's Walt, Walt Walter uh, something Emerson. 
Oh, I thought you were going to say Walter White from Breaking Bad. No, it's it's Wal- Emerson, Walter. Yeah, question nothing. What is it? Walf Waldo Emerson? <laughs> Waldo Emerson. Walf Waldo Emerson? <laughs> what are you saying? Ralph Waldo Emerson. I'm confused now. I am as well. Ralph well, Emerson. Waldo Emerson. Yeah, Emerson. He lived in Massachusetts. That's awesome. Um, to be Dancing from the East Coast. Life. He said, question everything. I say, fuck you. <laughs> How do you have that much time? Eat the hot dog. You want to know what's in a hot dog? No. So you would you say question it. nothing? No, I'd say question things when you have time and you feel up to it. <laughs> question everything, learn something, answer nothing. That's from Euripides, by the way. <laughs> Euripides? Euripides. <laughs> Why does everyone know how to pronounce all these Greek? Because I went to school. Well, you didn't correct me when I said it was Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> yes, I did. I just told you it was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Okay, whatever. Your PDs. No, was... Thoreau lived in Massachusetts. Sorry. Okay, this is okay, Henry we, David. We've never claimed to be a literary podcast. I would be fine being a literary podcast. So would I. I clearly you wouldn't. I, you I... called someone a esophagus the other week. <laughs> and that's fine. Did you hear that Montana banned TikTok completely? Let me walk you through this because I know it's confusing. This is a headline I'm actually like. What if I told you I actually understand it in full? You asked me the other day to explain it to you in full. Okay, but what if I had told you that I fully understand it? Now you do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I, I did, ex- I sent you three paragraphs. Right. Ex- explanation. Yeah, I get it. Okay, I'll go through it really fast. So if you don't understand what's happening, Montana banned TikTok fully because of the Chinese spies. I want to tell Montana... It's China. If they want your data, they're going to get it. So go ahead and ban them. Now they're aware of your presence. And before that, oh, actually, Montana had the Chinese spy blue over it as well. Oh, my God. That's fishy. That's where they shot it down. Hmm. That's fishy. (laughs) What if, like, the Chinese just invade Montana? Do you think, like, I wonder (laughs) if it's, like, truly because Hank Green lives there. And he knows too much. He he might know too much about TikTok. That'd be funny if China was just like, hey, uh, you guys are all good. We're just going to we're heading to Montana. We heard the skiing's great. Yeah. Um, we want to take a visit to uh, Jeffrey Star's Yak Ranch. That's Wyoming. Oh, same thing. So Montana banned TikTok. And um, the way that they did that, for anyone confused, is so, like if you already have TikTok, like if you have Flappy Bird, it's not going. It's not going to get deleted off your phone. They're not going to like check. But What's Flappy Bird? Okay, hold that. Angry thought. Birds. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. It was, hold that, that when you're the hold that bird thought. is. And I, you're I, we're gonna. That's a full different conversation, okay. and I'm gonna forget because that's a hilarious. You said mm-hmm. what's Flappy Bird? Were you not on your phone back? Wait, then? hold on. I think I know what Flappy Bird. Is. Okay, so if you already there it is. I yeah, know Flappy. Right. Sorry, sorry. I thought he was called Happy Bird. Happy Bird. <laughs> oh. I know Flappy Bird. Okay. So if you already have it on your phone, you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna. They're not gonna come. Why did they get rid of Flappy Bird? Please let me do the TikTok thing. You brought up Flappy Bird. It was an example. So if you already have it on your phone, it's going to be fine. But TikTok has like app updates every single day. So eventually that app's just going to break on your on your operating system. Yeah. So it's and then they're they're finding Apple and Google Play stores. Um, Ten thousand dollars a day that it lives in the app store, so that you are not going to be able to even download it. So you could get. You could get a VPN and download it in another. Could you just drive to the neighboring state? Like, that's what I'm confused about. I think you could. So that's stupid. I know. That's insane. I don't really, I guess I don't get it. So anyways, Flappy Bird. um, I know what Flappy Bird is. Yeah, but the guy that made Flappy Bird, I'm making this up, by the way, I think. But we can confirm it. The guy that made Flappy Bird, like, killed himself. Because of the popularity of his app, it got to his head. I don't think he killed himself. I think he didn't like the press that it was getting and just decided to take it off the app. Oh. oh. Where did you get kill himself from? Oh, I thought he There's got to be like another Flappy Bird by now, though. Like yeah, a, there's 50. Yeah. But also, he, there's, like a, um, there's like a Flappy Bird on TikTok, too, a filter. Yeah, where you move it. Nobody actually died... Of the game Flappy Birds, it has been revealed that this story is a hoax. Even the police report. Is Temple huh. Run still available for download? Okay. Oh, he did kill himself. Wow, that sucks. That's a bummer. 
Um, Dong Wen killed himself with a gun. Okay, well, that's why Flappy Bird is no longer here or Dong. That's sad. Yeah, that's a sad story. Sad. Um, we can talk about I feel hangovers like you... or we can talk about um, the idol. I think we do the idol okay. because I want to get invited to can okay. the next two years. Okay. So shitting on one of the movies is going to get us there? I don't think... I'm not shitting on it. Is it a <clears> show or a movie? It was hard to tell. Does anyone know? I, th- show? I think it's a show too. I thought it was a show because... I didn't realize okay. they did shows at can. Which, yeah. by the way, in my head, it will always be cons. It doesn't make sense that it's not massive cans. <laughs> oh my god, the Jugs Festival? Are you going to Jugs, France? <laughs> Are you going to weekend one or weekend two of Jugs? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually. It's weird because they there was no direct flight, so I'm flying into Areola, France, mm. and then I'm making my way through the tubes and out the boobs. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'll meet you there, and then I'll be arriving in Cannes. Okay, I'll, I'm actually taking high speed fallopian. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> are you renting an e-bike? Um, I'm not, I'll be on a bird. Cool. Through the fallopian, into the tubes. I'll meet you there. Cool. And then we can head to to Jugs together. Jugs Film Festival. Mm-hmm. JFF. <laughs> <sighs> um, hope everyone's doing well in cans. Make sure you're hydrating. I'm back on whole milk, by the way. Okay, like well, do you want to talk about the idol, oh. which is why we started talking about yeah, can? Okay. So we're talking about <laughs> Cannes Film Festival. Um, and the idol, which I was ex- I was so excited because I love Rich- Rachel Sennett. And then she's just all of a sudden this A-list celebrity mm-hmm. with The weekend, And um, what's her name? Johnny Depp's daughter? Lily Rose. Lily Rose. And I'm watching this trailer. I'm like, damn, this is kind of, this looks good. And I was really excited. And then I saw... That Sam Levinson is the director. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's why this is like. I don't think he he does things in like a in an artistic way. I really think that it's overtly sexual in a, in a shocking way. Right. No, he. I think he for sure is going for shock factor rather than artsy fartsy. But also, apparently, he got like a five minute standing ovation. That I could be making that number up. No, but I, you're right. Five minute standing <clears throat> ovation and was like sobbing like so profoundly moved by the five minute standing ovation but i think every single thing gets a standing ovation and five minutes is probably like the minimum you know what i'm not standing for five minutes to clap and it has a seven <laughs> 17 okay on... so is this rotten tomatoes first of all i don't i don't i don't subscribe to the notion that rotten tomatoes holds any weight to be honest because it's it's been wrong for me personally like several times and really wrong i feel like it's usually pretty good for me except for that one can have you ever seen the movie the boy it's a horror movie about a doll no i think that is one of the best movies and i have not met one other person who thinks it's even remotely entertaining or watchable oh it is a 31 that's good (laughs) but i think it is so like stand out wait can you type in type in like fool's gold something that i really like i don't like that movie yeah see but it's a human experience chalk it up 11 that makes sense to me so it's it's been wrong i'm not claiming to be end all be all film critic by any means i'm just saying there's some things that make me feel good what's what's a movie that we both like oh i was just gonna ask can you what's tick tick boom have Eighty-eight. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's certified fresh. Here's here's one that is just like good, easy. Titanic. Like that is okay. that was a that, that's a film. That, that's a good. That's one. a film. The second one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Came out in nineteen ninety seven. Eighty eight. Yeah. How about Dirty Dancing? I gotta get. I want to get one in the nineties. I don't know what a perfect movie is. Has anything ever gotten? I think it's the second one. Oh, there. Seventy. Damn. How about? Wait, well, it's like a per- I, I really want to get one in the 90s. I really want to read this thing that someone said about the idol. Pop Crave on Twitter is so unhinged, which by the way, I think I'm going to delete my Twitter. I saw the most gnarly video last night with no warning on it at all, like fully saw someone die. Oh, that's awful. And I it was just on my TL. Your TL is horrifying. I think you need to engage with like <clears throat> like really stupid like the stuff that I do. I mean, I don't. I block. I'm blocking right and left. I'm trigger trigger happy with the blocks. Taylor Swift is loving Ice Spice right now on Pop Crave, and I'm just looking for. There, she's doing a remix with Ice Spice for a song. Um, okay, wait. Something was said last night about the idol. 
no, it was something about Lily Rose Depp being nicknamed Cum Rag on Twitter because of the new movie. That sucks. That's a shitty nickname to have. Did you have a nickname in high school? 75 minutes, we got a wrap. <laughs> My nickname in high school is Cooter. I thought that was college. College. Cooter McCoy. Um, the Idol reportedly features a scene depicting Lily Rose Depp's character photographed with semen on her face, leading to be branded as the human cum sock on social media. That sucks. That reminds me. All of my dad's college friends call him Juice. And I have always been asking, like, why are you Juice? Since I was little. And he said he will never tell me. So I have got to know. Could it be because he's Jewish? And I, then I feel like Jews? he would just tell me. If that was the case. Maybe he's messing I feel with like him. it's something really bad. Ooh, that's anyway. really scary. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> we're going to wrap up and head to the bonus. Congratulations to Jeff Bezos on his engagement. I cannot wait for the wedding, Jeff. That is going to be so much fun, you guys. Hoping you get a plus one. Yes. Yeah. Um, or you can apply to be security. Ooh, that would be a fun thing to be security for. They're, they better vet everybody. Mm -hmm. That's going to be like a fun wedding because Je like Jeff's been going to Coachella and like <clears throat> hanging out with people and like going to dinner with like Kim Kardashian. Like, <laughs> Let's cut the last like 45 minutes of this. <laughs> okay, bye. We'll see you guys in bonus. We'll it's going to be really bonus. fun. This week on Close Friends. Today I saw an elderly gentleman in the street wearing a shirt with a big QR code on it. It gave me a shortened web address, which I followed, only to be faced with a picture of the same gentleman naked, grinning, and giving a thumbs up. That's really funny. Considering he was old, it wouldn't be funny if he was young. Reverse ageism. Reverse ageism. Did you get it on Amazon? Oh, that's fun. Can I do it? It works anywhere. Stick it onto the mirror. Stick it onto a window. Stick it onto a cabinet. Stick it onto my ass. Do you have your wisdom teeth in or out? Out. I don't think it matters. My mom still has hers. But the dentist told me just to get them out for fun. I love it. I lounged for a week. I punched my mom in the face. But um, other than that, it went swimmingly. Yeah. Sign up on TMGstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.